Okay, for this problem uh, is one that's not factored, so that's always your first step. You want to factor it. So we're going to do x plus 2, and on the bottom there we can pull out an x squared. That's the common one. That's the same in both of those. So that's going to leave you with x minus 1. You always see if you factored it correctly by multiplying back through, and that would be the correct uh, factorization. Okay, well, what's going to be the setup on this one? Okay, now sometimes you might actually have a combination of more than one rule. In this case, you actually have to use rule number one because you have this linear factor right here, but you also want to use rule number two because you have something that's raised to a higher power. Anytime you have something raised to a higher power that's a linear, and this technically can be considered linear because we can write that as x minus zero or x plus zero, then that's a combination of both rules. So here's what what's going to look like. Let's use rule number two for the x squared. What that'll look like is a1 over x plus a2 over x squared. Again, you start the power. Whenever you have a multiple power one like that, you always begin with the first linear factor raised to the first power, and the second one is raised to second power and third power, fourth power. You keep doing that until you reach the highest power. In this case, the highest power is two, so we only have these two terms we have to worry about there. Then we have an a3, and that's going to be over x minus 1. So now this is going to be the correct uh, way to decompose this by using a combination. We use rule number 2 and we use rule number 1 in this case. The next thing we want to do is get our common denominators so we can get the main equation that we're going to use for using one of our two methods to solve for a1, a2, and a3. So I'll start, we have this one here, that's the factored version. And I want to get common denominators with each of these. The common denominator is x squared times x minus 1. So you want to take the first one, this is a1 over x, and you want to multiply it by what it's missing in order to get the common denominator. We need to multiply this by an x to get x squared, but we also need x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply this by x times x minus 1. By multiplying that out, that would end up giving me the common denominator that I'm looking for. The next one has x squared, but it's missing x minus 1. So I need to multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. That way when I multiply that, I'll get the common denominator I'm looking for. Then the last one, I have, I have x minus 1, but I'm missing the x squared. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x squared. So now I have that all written out. I've made all the bottom ones exactly the same. All the denominators are now equal to x squared times x minus 1. So now that I have that, I'm ready now to write out the big long equation I'll be using for uh, the convenient values method or whatever method I want to use. x minus 2, I'm just going to look at the top only. The bottom ones are already the same, so I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just looking at the numerators, the top parts of the fraction only a1 x times x minus 1, I have a2 times x minus 1, and I have a3 times x squared. So this is the main equation that I'm going to be working with. And so again, I need to, I can either do this by convenient values or I can use equating coefficients. Because I have three variables here, equating coefficients uh, might be a little bit longer, so I'm going to do this one by convenient values. All right, so here's the equation we just came up with, and now we're going to start putting in convenient values. The first one we want to put in, uh, we can see here's an x sitting by itself, so it would be good to put in a 0 because then I'll cancel out uh, two terms. So first thing I'll do is let x equal 0. Okay, so I'll put 0 in on both sides. 0 plus 2 is going to equal a1. Now, 0 has to go in there, there's an x by itself, so 0 by itself goes in there, and I have 0 minus 1. I have a2 times 0 minus 1, and I have a3, there's another single x term squared, so that's going to be just 0 squared there. When I cancel everything out, let's see what happens. I get 2 here, everything with a 0 in it, that's going to go away. So this part's going to go away, that one's going to go away. And end up with negative 1 times a2 as a result. Divide by the negative and I get negative 2 is equal to a2. So now I have one of my values. Next, I'm going to pick another value to put in. This time I'm going to do let x equal 
Okay, I've already used zero. Another value I can put in is gonna be one. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna let x equal one. Okay, I'm gonna put one in on both sides. One plus two I have here, a one times one. I have one minus one. a two, one minus one there for this one. And I have a three times one squared. Putting a one in there for all the x's. Again, I wanna simplify. The parts that have one minus one, those are gonna both be zero, so I can cancel both of those out. I get three equals a three uh, times one. So there we go, we are automatically get our, our a three. So now we have those two values. I'm gonna go ahead and write those values up here. So I get a two is equal to negative two, and I have a three is equal to three. Okay, well what's the other convenient value to pick? We've run out of values to put in. We've already used the zero, we've already used the one. We don't have anything else to put in here to cancel something out. If you get to this point when using convenient values, then the last step, you, you can actually pick any value for x that you want. We're gonna put these substitutions in. So what I'm gonna do next is, so once you've exhausted and used up all your convenient values and you still have one more variable to solve for, here's what you wanna do. This is what we already solved for already. We found a2, we found a3. Let's substitute those back into this equation and we'll get this. So x plus two is gonna equal a1. We still don't know what a1 is, so we're gonna leave that one alone. This is a2. a2 we found, negative two. And so that's gonna be minus two times x minus one. And then I have a3 is three, so I, I get uh, this. So this is my equation I have now. I've already solved for the first two by using convenient values, so now that I've done that, I have my new equation I'm gonna use. Now in this case, it does not matter what value for x that you pick here. You can't use the ones we've previously used, so you don't wanna use zero and one because we already used those already. Pick another value to put in. Now again, it doesn't matter what, what the value is. Any value for x is now gonna work and you'll get the correct value for a1. Doesn't matter what you use. So. If I pick a low number that works, I'm gonna use two. Now it doesn't matter, you can pick really any value you want on here, but for the, our purposes here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick, I'm basically gonna say let x equal any number for the second time, but for my purposes here, I'm gonna use two. But technically, you can use any number you want to on this stage here. Put two in everywhere you see an x, two plus two, I have a one times two, two minus one two minus one here, and I have a two in there uh, for that one. The reason why you wanna put in your values for a two and a three is because that way you eliminate two of the variables and you only have one variable left to solve for. That's why it doesn't matter what value for x that you put in there. Uh, you get four here. This is gonna give, two minus one is one, so I get two times a one. This part here, I get minus two times one and I get plus three times four if I do the square first. Uh, simplifying, I get two times a one minus two plus 12. And you wanna get everything all over to the, the left-hand side because you wanna isolate a one. So what, what I'll happen here is I get, I get a 10 there. And so if I move that across, so it's track 10 there, I'll get minus six. Minus six equals two times a one. So then I get negative three is a1. So now I have all three, all the values that I need. I have a1, a2, and I have a3. I got all those. The very last thing that you're gonna do now is you're gonna put all these in and you're gonna write your answer. So we've done all the work finding all three of those. So here's our last step. Our last step is just to go ahead and write our answer. So I'm gonna erase all this and get our final answer by plugging it in. So we're just gonna go ahead and substitute these numbers back into here because that was my original setup. So a1 was negative three, negative, th so I get negative three over x. a2 is negative two, so I can go ahead and write that as a minus, minus two over x squared. And then the a3 was a three, so I have plus three over x minus one. So that would be your final answer that you would put. This was the partial fraction decomposition taking this original fraction written in that form and we're splitting it up into these three fractions.